I'd like to focus you on, on, on one of the implications of what you're saying. Uh, one of the most remarkable phenomena of recent history has been the rapprochement between Israel and the PLO, which was formerly vilified uh, as, as a satanic force in, in the world, as terrorists and murderers. And suddenly, by comparison with Hamas, PLO seems like a very desirable partner for peace uh, to the extent that uh, Israel is, is entertaining, uh, releasing men that they put in jail for terrorist acts so that they can turn uh, uh, their weapons against Hamas. And, and the reason is that with PLO, uh, an organization with nationalist aspirations, one can negotiate a state and the state will satisfy their demands. Uh, with Hamas, which uh, uh, has a much more expansive cosmic view of the struggle, there is no basis for a, a negotiated peace. Is that not an example of where injecting religion into a political conflict raises the stakes? That's a, a, a phrase. One of for many, many examples. I would say, however, that it's important to recognize that the Israelis reached out and negotiated with the PLO long before Hamas was a serious organization of any kind. Uh, and not, again, because they thought, well, the PLO is better than Hamas. It's because the social aspects changed. Where suddenly, it was, it was politically expedient in order to negotiate with, with, uh, with the PLO. And so suddenly, the, the terminology of them as a death squad of, of suicide bombers or of fanatics that could not be talked to, those, that kind of rhetoric fluttered away. Um, so, I, I mean, to me, that, that sort of, in, in many ways, uh, um, strengthens what I'm what I'm talking about when I say that you know we we cannot in any way think of religion as existing solely in a vacuum. That's what I meant yeah, by I, religion is I by definition interpretation. I don't. I don't. But again, if the poorest, most molested people were by and large the jihadists and the engineers and the architects and the doctors, the people who had a benefit of of uh, the good life were disproportionately moderate, then this analysis of yours would make some sense. But we have someone like uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri, right? A surgeon. He comes from one of the most respected families in Egypt. He's got doctors and judges and pharmacists, as far as the eye can see. Um, he is not an exception. He is not, if you correct for literacy in the Muslim world, support for suicide bombing goes up. I mean, this is that the most radicalized people uh, are not the people who, in particular, well, you can see this in microcosm when you actually look at the biographies of the 19 hijackers. These were all college educated. Many of them had PhDs. I mean, it's just not the religion really is separable uh, as the most important va variable. And what is actually right on the surface to be seen is that these people are telling us what is motivating them. The jihadis are talking all day long about the pleasures that await martyrs in paradise, the, 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 just the, the horrors of living in proximity with the infidels, the, the desecration of the Muslim holy sites by the proximity of, of uh, uh, infidel troops on the ground. I mean, this is, you know, Osama bin Laden tells us what motivates him. He's telling us why he's not living in Paris and dating models with his inheritance. I mean, he's, he, he is being quite articulate ad nauseum. Um, and so to deny the role that religion is playing, I would never for a moment say that, that there are not poor, mistreated people <clears throat> driven to extremis uh, and to extreme violence for reasons other than religion. Of course that happens. But this is a, a, this is a separable component which we have rendered by the terms of our discourse by our emotional attachment to it immune to criticism. It is taboo to say that the Quran is bogus but as, a, as a document that, that describes the history of, of uh, uh, the evolution of our species, as a document that makes really cogent prescriptions about how to live in the, in the 21st century, as is the Bible. Uh, almost entirely bogus if you're going to take it as a, as a text to live by. Um, it is taboo to say that. You could not possibly get elected in this country if you even openly doubted whether or not there was a creator God listening to, to the prayers of your constituents. I mean, this is the world we are living in, and it's... Uh, well, I, Sam, I, 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 just, I have to say, I'm not sure what world you're living in, but uh, 
if it were taboo to say those things, and I don't think you would have sold half a million copies of your book. Half a million um, copies is, is the 25 million copies of The Purpose Driven Life being sold. I mean, it's, it, it <laughs> well, is a, it is those, a are, those are vastly different books and vastly different audiences. Yes. But I think, look, Zawahiri, and this is, and I'm so glad that you brought this up, because Zawahiri wasn't a jihadist until he was placed in the sed dank and sadistic prisons of Egypt and tortured. And then when he came out, then he became a jihadist. Well, that's actually I had not no true. way. No, it's absolutely true. Well, he was a I member. Read the Looming member, Tower. I, he I was a, I know Lawrence Wright. We've talked about this. He's he himself, uh, Zawahiri, was of course a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. But the Muslim Brotherhood is not a jihadist organization. Close enough. And to, by my life. That is. That, again, indicates the profound unsophistication that you have about this region to think that there is a connection between the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and Al-Qaeda, that they are exactly the same thing. I'm not saying they're the same thing, but or that they're close the, ideology, the ideology is so close in its, in its divisiveness. You, you in could its... not be more wrong in that okay, case. Well, we've read and the again, same book. This know. is not the issue. The issue isn't that poor people become suicide bombers. Everybody knows that that's not true. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that, and you read bin Laden, his, his justifications for, for the terrorist acts are not religious justifications. They're, They're not? No, not, not at all. He says very clearly, it's because of Palestine. It's because of troops in Saudi Arabia. It's because of now what's going on in Iraq. Now, these, we can say, are are false constructs that they, he doesn't really mean these things and certainly well, no, he's never no, done no, anything no, to no, help but they're theological issues. grievances no they're not and that is exactly where I think you're misunderstanding what's happening they're social grievances they are political grievances they are economic grievances and like everybody on earth they are framed in the language of religion you know we stand here in the United States, one of the most religious countries in the world, as Sam, you, you certainly know, a country in which we are perfectly comfortable when our politicians, even those that are nominally religious, use the most distinct religious language to talk about purely social or economic or political issues, it's perfectly normal for us because, of course, we understand that that kind of language is the language that holds the most currency with the masses. We are, of course, embroiled in a war between good and evil, are we not? I mean, again, but somehow when a member of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt uh, uses the same kind of religious language, it as theocratic or Islamist or fundamentalist in some way. There are people who have, legitimately or not, very serious grievances with what they see as a, or how they understand a, a legitimate resistance to what they uh, view as an attack upon their very identities. And of course, identity goes far deeper than just simply cultural or social or national or religious. It's a combination of those things. And who have used the language of religion to give voice to that opposition, to give voice to that resistance in very extreme and very unusual cases that identity, that, that, that attack on an identity, that language, leads to horrific acts of violence. But to sort of reduce it to, well, it's, you know, it's not about uh, you know, being poor or being about rich, that you know, he was a doctor and he became a jihadist, therefore you know, it must have been religion that, that uh, influenced him to do it and not his, his you know, poverty or for any situation. I, again, I think that, that that's a real, um, it's a real sort of oversimplification of a, of a very complex issue that has much more to do with one's identity than it does to, with one's faith. Uh, let me pause.